Hello and welcome back to this uh, second video in the series. In this video, we'll create a standard uh, GARC model and we'll use the output to write model equations. We'll also do interpretation of the model output and look at uh, 12 plots that are generated based on the model. And this video will end with a forecast of next 20 trading days. So let's start with the standard GARC model with a constant mean. Before we create a model, we create a specification for the model. And let me store this specification in S. The function that we use is called UGARC spec. So we specify three things here. One is the mean model, then the variance model, and then the distribution of error. So let's start with the mean model. Arma order equals zero zero. AR means auto regressive. MA means moving average. And because we are going to use constant mean model, so we are saying that the both values are zero. So there are various varieties of uh, GARC model. So we are starting with the standard one. So I'm going to say S GARC, and then the distribution for the error term. So let's start with the simplest one, normal distribution. So now we can create the model and store it in M. We can create the model using UGARC fit. The data that we are going to use is our return data. Specification that we are going to use is stored in S. So we run the model. So this model has lot of useful information. So let's run M. This is the standard GARC model with one and one. We are using a constant mean model and the distribution of error we have specified is normal. So this model has four parameters, mu, omega, alpha, one and beta one. These are the estimates of these parameters. We also get a p-value and the values are so low that for all practical purposes, they are almost zero, which means that all the four parameters are statistically significant or in other words, they should be there in the model. Now let's see how we can use this and write the equation of the model. So returns for the model is given by RT equals mean mu and then the error term where this error term follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma t square. For our model, you can see the value is 0 0.001836. So this becomes the mean equation. And this mean is constant. And the equation for sigma t square variability at time t is given by omega plus alpha times e t minus 1 square which means a prediction error for the previous time period and then beta times sigma t minus 1 square. So if we replace these values, sigma t square equals 0 0.4 zeros and 1 4 plus e t minus 1 square plus. So this is how our GARC variance model looks like. So note that uh, if we do not have the beta term in the variance, then it reduces to arc model of order one, which is basically omega plus alpha times e t minus one square. This model also provides a lot of other useful analysis and information that we can use. So one of them is uh, information criteria and it calculates information criteria based on four different uh, methods. So information criteria helps us to avoid unnecessarily choosing very complex models. So a simpler model usually has a lower information criteria and therefore that model is more useful for returns. When we have developed several GARC models, we can make use of information criteria to choose a specific model and we choose a model that gives us the lowest value for information criteria. Another output we have is junk box test on standardized residuals. Null hypothesis here is no serial correlation. And because you can see these p-values are more than 0 
So in this case, we cannot uh, reject this null hypothesis. Therefore, indicating that there is no evidence of serial correlation in the standardized residuals and we have a similar analysis for standardized square residuals. So we can say there is no evidence of serial correlation in the squared standardized residuals and hence they more or less behave like a white noise process. So it also means that our GARC model is valid. Another useful test that we have is the goodness of fit test. So we notice that all the p-values are quite small, much smaller than 0.05, which means that we reject null hypothesis and conclude the model for residuals that we used, like in this case it is normal distribution, it's not really a good choice. If our distribution for the residuals is a good fit, then this goodness of fit test should give us p-values which are higher than 0.05. Obviously, this means that there is a scope to improve our model. So, if you do plot M, this gives us a choice of 12 different plots. For example, if you want to plot first one, we can type 1 and hit enter. If you have to exit, enter 0, hit enter. We can also plot all 12 plots in one go. So, we can say which equals all. So this is a very useful tool. We can get these uh, 12 plots in no time. If you look at the first plot, it is a series with two conditional standard deviations superimposed. You have this data for returns and these red lines are at two standard deviations, you can see. So basically these two lines uh, include roughly about 95% of the data on returns. The next chart we have series with 1% value at risk limits. So these lines now you see are at 1%. So this plot is for conditional standard deviation versus uh, returns. So returns here are absolute returns and the blue line that we see is the standard deviation. And this plot is uh, autocorrelations for the observations and these are for squared observations. And in fact, you can see almost all lines are over this red line, which indicate presence of significant autocorrelations. We have a similar situation for absolute observations too. Then we have a cross correlation of squared versus actual observations. This is the histogram for residuals or errors. You can see that the histogram is slightly different when you compare it with the normal distribution. And in fact, uh, this becomes more clear if you look at a QQ plot. You can see the tails deviate from the normal distribution significantly, both for lower values and higher values. So basically, we have a thicker tail that we observed in the histogram. If we do autocorrelations for standardized residuals, things improve significantly. And for squared standardized uh, residuals, you can see all the values are within the red lines. And this curve indicates that whether we have a news which has a positive impact on returns or negative impact on returns. So we are giving more or less same weightage. Now let's use this model for making a forecast. We are going to store forecast in F. Function that we use is UGARC forecast. Fit or spec, we specify our model M. And let's make a prediction for next 20 trading days. So using the model, we can make a plot, fitted values in F. Note that uh, this is a constant mean model. So our predictions are basically constant. We can also plot variability. Our data is still end of 2019. So the model expects that for the next 20 days, the volatility is going to increase. In the next video, we will look at various variants of GARC model.